that's another dissecting sword. Dissected circle. So if you look at this now, right? So on this project, um, it's a it's a small garden. It's not a big garden. You can see that, and. Uh, what we've done is that we've got the pavement at diagonals, but we've based this design on into sort of dissecting circles. So the patio is defined on one big circle. Now we're going to try and do the borders and we're going to try and show uh, the circle on that to define the, the edges of where we're going really and the perimeters so our client can actually start seeing the garden grow. Cool. So on the concept plan, we've got this uh, perimeter, we've got a border coming around here, and uh, this is going to be done in sleepers in a vertical upright, uh, tannoyed uh, sleepers of course. So we're going to have to start digging a trench out on here, but first of all, so at some point what's going to happen is the, the sleeper is going to, the, the raised bed rather is going to finish here, okay, and then a new one will start somewhere along here. So we've got to do a return here. So this area here, we're going to put probably a couple of little slabs in here. So um, we could maybe put a little seat or a little feature or a water feature or something just in this corner so we can look back down and look at that part of the garden because that part of the garden is a vista as well. So it makes it look, look a lot bigger than what it is. And especially with the paving being laid at a diagonal, okay? It just draws the eyes over it. And the thing is about the circles, is that when you walk into the garden, the eye follows around, it just moves around rather than just squares where it just stops. So there's a lot of movement in the garden, which is what we want. So what we're doing now, where we overlaid um, for to shape our patio up, and uh, if you look along, I keep going back now across here, We've gone along with a, a, a grinder just to cut back, you can see on here, so we can take this out. Because what we don't want, okay, what we don't want is mortar underneath the soil. So we need a good depth of soil. So we'll take this mortar out, get rid of it, or recycle it if we can recycle it. But what's going to happen is if the grass is sat on this mortar, it's just going to scorch and you'll see the, the brown. And what we want is that grass to be nice and green because it's got a good depth of soil underneath. Well, as you can see, we've got a good depth there now, so we know that the soil on that side, when we start digging to put the raised bed in, can go back in on this side. It's just starting to rain now, so we're going to clean this up, make sure it looks nice and clean for our customer, and uh, hopefully, with a bit of luck, the rain will stop. Probably one of the most important parts, now we've dug this back, and certainly because it's Monday, we need to go and have some breakfast. So what we're doing here, as you can see, we got a nice meandering shape going all the way around, okay? And this is going to be a raised bed. The thing that we have to do is that we don't want any damp going into that, that uh, garage at all. So once we've got the sleepers in place, okay, this is going to be a raised bed meandering around. We are going to dig along the back and we're going to put another wall in place. 
and we're going to tank that wall to ensure that no damp migrates into the, the neighbour's garage. So the soil is really good. We've dug this down really deep before. We've introduced a real dark, good organic soil. And we're putting this soil now along the edge of the patio so that the grass, as I said before, doesn't dry out along that patio. But as you can see, the shape's coming on. If you just come down this way, you'd be able to look at the shape, a beautiful meandering shape, nice and curvaceous. And that's why I said that circles in gardens actually help it makes the eye wonder and you look around the garden and that's what's good about it it just makes it look bigger than what it really is but what we do want to do this morning is uh we don't want to do any time lapse there you are we're digging do you need to see it in time lapse so the soil is really good we've dug this down really deep before we've introduced a real dark good organic soil and we're putting this soil now along the edge of the patio so that the grass, as I said before, doesn't dry out along that patio. But as you can see, the shape's coming on. If you just come down this way, you would be able to look at the shape, a beautiful meandering shape, nice and curvaceous. And that's why I said that circles in gardens actually help. It makes the eye wonder and you look around the garden and that's what's good about it. It just makes it look bigger than what it really is. But what we do want to do this morning is, uh, we do not want to do any time lapse. There you are. We're digging. Do you need to see it in time, Matt? Okay. So when we finally level this off, we just go through and then pick some of the, the bigger stone. Stone is good in the ground, but not as big as that. You want something a little bit more finer. And really, you, you want really sort of like river eroded gravel because it's, as a small chipping because they create more air pockets better than if you had angular stone like in there. Anyway, I'm waffling on now. Right, we've got that bit to dig now, over there. So as you can see, we're, we're cutting our timbers for our um, raised beds, okay. And we've got to sand these down as well. And these are pressure treated, okay. Um, but we've noticed now, just with this pile of sleepers on this position on the patio, the patio has begun to sunk. Look, you won't let me pick the sleeper up. As per usual, I'm doing all the work. I'm doing this one here, and uh, there, 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 Maddie, that's fine. We're just doing a bit of camera work, um, just getting used to it. So, just want to tell you about this. Um, well, I never realised that I've had this DeWalt saw 18 years. 18 years I've had this. No, probably about 17, I could be lying then, but I don't get caught lying on the internet. So I've had this De De DeWalt saw and the stand. I bought it from Platform years ago, a company called Platform, but it was part of Juicens, and I think there is one platform around now. But for many years, I, <laughs> I never changed the blade. And then I realized then that this housing here the bearing was going and it's so important that you you actually let these things cool down and uh, I had to get all this change at uh, I think it was data tools in Cardiff and I was just thinking then Lloyd it's just warming up a little bit we haven't done many cuts but it is warm you've got to watch it because the bearings do get hot and uh, is it time for another saw I don't know but it's been a good saw Who's on there? Ready? Go. I've just realised that though we've got a bag on here and it's collecting the dust, do I need to wear a mask? I do read, I suppose, don't I? But... They're outside. Oh, well, we haven't changed this, have we? Right, let's change it now. So, bought this little um, belt sander. It was 99, wasn't it? 89 quid. But you told me 99. 89. Right, so they better give me the wrong belts again now. We've been down to Screwfix and they gave us the wrong size, didn't they? They yeah. gave us the title ones instead of the, the Makita ones. So this is a 60 grit on them. Now, let's have a look now. Hold on, open. <coughs> ah, 
So let's have a look at these bits. I don't know if any of you have used these before, but there we are. It's on, 760. What was it? What was it? The size of these are... P60. 760 by 475, 475 wide. There you are. Good grip. Let's have a look now. Oh, here it Maybe the case that somebody's going to say that I'm using it the wrong way, but these are rough sawn, but they are quite smooth anyway. But excuse me. <coughs> oh, excuse me, okay. Because then I, I doesn't mean sound Jewish. And what's wrong with being Jewish? So what we're doing here, you can see, is feel that load. Keep filming. What does it feel like? Soft. Feel it there. Rough. Okay, so it is getting there, isn't it? Yep. So the other thing that we said, what we're going to do with these, we'll probably stain these as well, but we are going to put bitumen on the back, aren't we? To give it some protection and probably on the base as well. So that may be something that you can actually do tomorrow is, yeah. So what we were talking about is that we are probably going to stain these on the face, what's being seen, but also on the bottom side, um, which we're going to do a B-roll in a minute, but we're going to keep going with this. On the bottom side, we can bitumen sort of maybe about four inches up, okay, or and then do the back as well. And we have to treat the top because we've cut through on the top. So this is one we, we, we've done earlier, okay? Gone across the top. Do we do, do that a little bit more? That has been done just with the belt sander and we've gone down the side as well. And that's just a bit of dust on there now. And obviously it's treated on the top. That's so important that we treat the top as well before we finish it in, in the final color that our customer's gonna use. Um, but the other thing we could do, we could actually even router this as well, can we? So.
What are you doing, John? What am I doing? Um, this pile is for my new Django. Jingo, Django, do you know the, the wood the, where they stack the wood? Jenga. Jenga, that's it, right? So this is called Giant Jenga, all right? It's um, not for giants, okay? It's for small people, okay? Who's gonna struggle, because that's the fun bit about it, when the small people are trying to put these blocks together, make them stand. You can imagine how high this will go. Do you, do, do you understand? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, the, the giant Jenga for small people, it goes hand in hand. What are you up to by here, Maka? Well, what we're doing, this is a um, you know, flexi pole. It's uh, a bitumen uh, paint, obviously, okay? And now, as we look at this, this is going to be the face of the sleepers, okay? We're not coming up that high anyway, right? But w though this is a tantalized product, we still cut through the end, and we don't want any water penetration. So with a tantalized product, when, you, when, you, when it's pressure treated, it doesn't necessarily go right the way into the wood all the way. Now, they are, there is a process now which they're using a lot more often. They call it incise. They're using it for fencing posts. Incise posts is where, uh, through like automation, they cut down the grain, like little cuts all the way through, and it allows the pressure treatment to get down deeper into the wood, into the body of the wood, which will make it give it a little bit more longevity. But what we don't want is through end grain, water penetrating when we've cut it. Though it's tantalized on this side, on that side where we've cut it, it's not tantalized now, right the way through. So we put some tar on. This is the face, but what we're doing, let me just show you for this one. On this one now, okay, if we turn this one over, okay, what we do is, because we're gonna have some earth against this on the back in the raised bed, what we'll probably do, We've got to find a height where we want to work to. So we'll probably go about two thirds, okay? And we'll use a straight edge like we've done now once we've turned them all over. And this is the back now. And then we paint all the back, okay? So when the earth or any of the soil sat against the timber here, it's not going to rot. Now, what I was going to say, okay, I'll turn around now in a sec. Bear with me a, mo a moment. What I was going to say, so basically, a little bit on there. I just want to show you for video and purposes. So, a lot of people say about using plastic behind the timber, Lloyd. Yep. All right. Now the trouble is, if you put plastic behind the timber, the water is going to get trapped between the plastic, the plastic and, the wood. and the wood. Whereas nothing is going to get trapped here. The water is going to hit here. It's not going to penetrate, and hopefully it's going to run down. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I think about these things sometimes. And it sweats. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Like Louis said, so when the plastic, if you use plastic membrane behind the wood, the water gets down. That's going to hold because sometimes the plastic's not always straight. And like Lloyd said, then is that even if there's no water from the rain, it's going to sweat. Condensation absolutely, creates humidity. Because what happens is the soil warms up, and on the other side, that's when you get that condensation. So there we are. I hope that makes sense, and uh, I hope that it helps. But if you're not sure about this, just phone up one of these companies, you'll be able to ask them a little bit about their bitumen waterproofing products that are in the market. So. Right, okay, so what we're actually doing now is we're building this sleeper wall. Um, in height, these are 600, okay. They've come off a 2.4, so we've got four four pieces out of a 2.4, and it's gonna be a good height, because if you look at roughly where the level is, that's gonna be the grass level, so we haven't got a great depth, probably about 18 inches. It doesn't wanna to be too high, because it will just look too imposing on the garden. But what we're doing here, we're laying these in dry now, and as I said, we've treated on the back, we've treated on the bottom and on the sides. We smooth this part off, and we've actually, on the edges, we've smoothed the edges off as well with a belt sander. And eventually we we'll go over the top of here and we'll end up treating this bit, remembering the tantalized part of the timber, okay, is on that side. And yes, there will be a couple of cuts that have, two cuts that will have no tantalized edge. So what we've done, we've put the bitumen on the bottom side. The other thing, if you come and have a look from here, 
if you look straight down there for our viewers to see Lloyd on this one here we've actually planed this at an angle so that we get the shape coming round coming round this side here so we need to bring it round so we're gonna have to playing it because what we don't want we don't want a big opening on the front we want it to appear as if it's nice and tight so what we're doing now we've got so what we've got now we've got our pencil line across there and that indicates what we're looking roughly to take off. Remember, that's the meandering shape, okay? And uh, we've got a bit of flexibility, but you can just see, make up the line on there, what we've got to take off. But what I'll do, I'll take off the bulk of it initially with this. Now when we look at the top of it, we always see on here we've just got a little bit to take off on here. The blade, it's not a big saw, it's only a small one. Um, so we'll take the rest off with the planer. <laughs> There we are. If you look at the front of it first, you can see that it's nice and tight and it's following the shape of the trench that we've dug. And if you look down from the top side, if you look down here, you'll be able to see from there, our viewers will be able to see it's pretty tight as it, as it is anyway. And remember, this is, you know, it's an outdoor product. Um, this is not joinery, indoor joinery. We're not, make, we're not cabinet makers. We're making a raised bed, so. So what we're doing now, this open end, that's a full end there, we're just putting a screw at a 45. Just at the top, just to pull it in a little bit. There we go. Now a little bit of concrete. So, oh, I was gonna, that's dead on, that's dead on. I, I didn't mean that to happen, <laughs> but it, it's dead on. Just check this one here. What you gotta remember is there's gonna be discrepancies in the width of the timbers as well, so it could run out, so that's fine. Just as we come round, we'll keep checking this, that it's vertical. And when we go this way, we've got, no, oh, that's dead on. I, I, honestly, it's dead level. Come and have a look from here. Um, <laughs> I didn't expect that either, so yeah, well, that's good. Where we've planed the edge on here, though it's still tantalised, the, the pressure treatment actually goes down so far. It doesn't go right the way through the, the wood, not that I'm aware of, uh, not that I've known it. So what we're doing to ensure that that's not compromised, we're just actually treating the end bit there. So that should be fine there. So it's a little bit messy, but at the end of the day, it's necessary.
crept forward on the trench a little bit here, but we're trying to get the shape that we need. So did we dig the trench out as we want it? I don't know. Like, but the point being is that we can dig that back. That's not a problem. And you can see there's no gap in the top. We've treated the end there. We've treated the bombs and treated the back. And then we're concrete in. Remember, we're going to be putting more concrete on top of this. This is just a semi-dry. Just hold it in place. Now, we can see the gap on the front. We just mark the same gap there. That's the angle I want to be coming at. By the looks of it, maybe I could go a little bit more like that. Then we can set the saw, the circular saw, at the angle that we need to take off. I should have brought the other saw up, which is a bigger blade. But there we are. That's what we're taking off. So we've offered that in position, fits nice, nice and snug. Just take it out from here. And again, we'll put, there's other products you can actually use, but we just think this is so much better really. Sort of in between, the timber can still breathe. So, because we've got this side, we've got the face so it can breathe. It's not gonna hold the water, but it'll stop the, any moisture penetrating the end. Well, we had a bit of a hold up just a minute ago because we weren't quite running right. There was a bit of a sharp point, okay? And it wasn't coming nice and round, but we've got that now. You can see it's a lovely meandering shape and we're getting there. It's just good sometimes just to stop and go back and have a look and just check because it, it, just, it just wasn't right really. So back on there. There you are. We've got to the end and what I've decided, I'm going to put this at a right angle rather than following the slabs down there because it looks so much better. I'll move that drill in a minute to be able to see, but look at the shape of that coming around. Beautiful shape. Well done, Lloyd. Right. So what we've got here, we've got the raised bed on this side. We've got this meandering shape uh, going around. We showed you how we did it. If you've got any opinions on that, you know, just get back to me and let me know what you actually think about that because I'll be interested to know and I'm interested to learn from you as well out right there. But what we've got on this side, uh, we've got the neighbour's garage. It's, I, I believe it's a single skin. That's the damp course on it there. So it's so important that we keep any damp away from this side because this is going to be a raised bed. So the idea is we put a course of blocks along here, okay? We keep a 50 mil gap, okay? And the reason for the 50 mil gap is that that will allow any water and good aeration all the way down without any damp ingressing onto here. That's the last thing that we want. But what we'll actually do, Lloyd, in this case, we'll synth proof the back of this as well, just as a safeguard, just in case there'll be a hat, we'll have a 50 mil gap. What we don't want is any debris falling down there. And then when the damp starts happening is when you get the bridge in effect. So if there's a big stone gone down there and the idea about a 50 mil gap, may, may not make it 75 mil because you won't see it because it will, there'll be a planted border. But the idea by having a 75 mil gap, 50 mil gap, whatever, what we can do then, if anything gets down there, we can put a piece of batten in there and we can get it out if needed.